Bedtime with Mrs. Honeybee. Today, we'll be exploring the world of Frozen. If anyone can save Arendelle and free this forest, it's you. We're going to meet my friends Elsa, Anna, and Olaf on our adventure. They're so excited to see you. I'm just living the dream, Anna. All you have to do is close your eyes, get cozy, and listen to the sound of my voice. Oh, how I wish this could last forever. Mrs. Honeybee will be your guide. Let's begin. You are standing on a cobblestone bridge before the enormous castle of Arendelle, where Princess Anna and Queen Elsa live in the world of Frozen. I never see you anymore. Come out the door. It's like you've gone home. The stone castle stands against a backdrop of jagged mountains that are just barely peeking over the tops of the castle. The blue sky is cloudless overhead, and the city around the castle is still quiet and sleepy. But you are awake because the sky is awake. The springtime sunshine is slowly melting away the last of winter snow and ice. There's a big puddle right ahead of you as you begin to walk towards the castle. You get a quick running start toward the puddle before you jump, then stomp both of your feet together to make the biggest splash possible. Cool water splashes up all around you. You can hear the tiny droplets sprinkle the cobblestone bridge and the top of your head. You feel happy to be here to explore the castle and the kingdom. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Feel the cool morning air fill your lungs. Then breathe out through your mouth. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Feel the cool morning air fill your lungs. Then breathe out through your mouth. You continue walking along the bridge to the castle. The walls surrounding the castle are made of stone, but the gates are wooden and latched closed. You reach your hand up tall to lift up the latch, then push the gate forward with all of your might. It swings open. Once you're in the castle courtyard, you continue along the cobblestone path toward the incredibly tall wooden doors. One of the doors has a circular iron knocker in the middle of it for you to knock with. You reach up tall again and grab it with your hand. It feels cool to the touch in the shade of the towering castle. You lift it up and swing it down to hit the door two times. It makes a heavy knocking sound that you're sure is loud enough to get Elsa and Anna's attention inside. You stand back and wait for a moment for them to come to the door. Waiting, 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 the door does not open. You push one of your ears to the wooden door to see if you can hear anything inside, but it's completely silent. You reach up, stretching tall, to knock again until you notice the door is now slightly ajar. It must be unlocked and open. You gently push the heavy wooden door open with both your hands. It takes a little bit of effort but the door creaks open just enough for you to peek your head in. It's completely dark and still in the castle's entryway. Everyone must still be asleep. With both hands, you creak the door open just a little bit further and shimmy yourself into the castle. Once inside, you leave the door open slightly so the morning light can shine into the castle. The entryway is beautifully ornate, with velvet burgundy carpet rolled out over shiny marble floors. There's a winding staircase that curves around and around. You shut the heavy door behind you as gently as you can, and the morning light disappears into quiet 
sleepy darkness. It's very dark, but you can see three hallways that lead in different directions. One to your right, one to your left, and one straight ahead. Each of the hallways have doors that line either side that seem to go on forever. Which hallway do you want to explore first? You make your way down the hallway of your choice. It's very dark, but luckily, you see a candle flickering up high on the wall. There's a small wooden bench below the candle, so you jump up on that and reach up as tall as you can to carefully grab the candle, which is sitting on a light metal plate. With one hand, you hold the flickering candle steady while you use the other to balance yourself as you hop down from the bench. Now you can use the flickering flame to light the path of your chosen hallway. You continue down the hallway quietly, step by step, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot. Even though you're walking slowly and carefully, holding the candle with one hand out in front of you, you can see the yellow flame dancing in the air as you go. With each step, the flame curves and lights up the hallway with an orange glow. You study the details of the hallway as you walk. There are colorful pictures of Queen Elsa smiling, wearing a beautiful gown in a textured gold frame. You walk over to the frame and run your fingertips along the texture. There are little flowers made of gold. You can feel the shape of the flowers on your fingertips. Continuing down the hallway, you see the shadow of soft velvet drapes hanging down over gigantic windows. As you reach up, stretching tall again to try to unlatch it, you hear a quickly moving pitter-patter sound from somewhere in the castle. The sound starts quietly, then gets more and more noticeable. What is that sound? You look behind you toward the sound. You narrow your eyes to try to see what could be making that sound and can just barely make out the shape of a person running. As they get closer and closer to you, the pitter-patter of their running feet gets louder and louder. Now in the orange glow of the flame, you can see it. It's Anna. She's smiling big and so happy to see you. Her long reddish orange hair is in two braids that wave and flow through the air as she runs excitedly to hug you hello. She carefully takes the candle from you and rests it on another metal plate hanging on the wall. Then she reaches up tall to lift up the iron latch on the window. It makes a clinking sound as she jiggles it open. Once opened, she pulls back one side of the wooden shutters and swings it open. The morning springtime light floods into the hallway and lights everything up brilliantly. With the morning light, you can see all the brilliant colors of the castle hallway. Everything seems to shimmer and glisten in the sunshine. Now that you can see, you don't need the candle flame anymore. Take a big breath in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth to blow out the flickering flame. Once it goes out, a single trail of gray smoke floats up into the air until it completely dissipates. Then Anna says, Let's go wake up Elsa. The sky is awake. She excitedly takes you by the hand and you two run all the way down, down, We're not going alone. down the hallway to the very last door. You and Anna stop in front of a bright white door that has purple flowers painted down the middle and a gold door handle. You both press your ears against the door and cannot hear any noise coming from Elsa's room. She must be still asleep. You quietly grab the gold door handle 
and push it down to open the door slowly. It creaks open as you push it. You can see Elsa sleeping in her queenly bed, tucked in snoozing under mountains of soft, fuzzy blankets. The drapes are pulled shut. The room is cool and dark. You and Anna look at each other and nod, each knowing what the other wants to do. You both skip in the room to wake it up, grabbing each side with each of your hands, and you fling them open to let the morning light in. Anna jumps up onto Elsa's queenly bed and tosses the covers all around. Elsa wakes up smiling, excited to see you and Anna. The castle sits high above Arendelle, and you can see the bustling city has woken up. Looking out over the kingdom, you see all the places you want to explore. But before you do that, Elsa and Anna want to build a snowman. You follow Anna and Elsa back out of Elsa's room, strolling down the long, beautiful hallway. Anna and Elsa proceed to open each and every door that lines the hallway because love is an open door and they want to fill the entire castle with love. You help them because your heart is full of love. You walk up to a dark blue door, push the gold handle down, and swing the door open. Then you proceed to the next door. You, Anna, and Elsa open all the doors and windows until you get back to the entryway where you started. Then you go up the winding staircase, step by step, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot. You are holding on to the smooth, shiny banister as you go up, up, up to the upper floors of the castle. You can see the entryway from above now and turn off the staircase down another hallway with only one door. Anna and Elsa invite you to open the door since you are their guest. You walk proudly up to a tall, dark red door and push down the handle. It swings open easily and is the door to the grand ballroom. You walk into the room. It's so big and so bare that you can feel voices echoing through the empty space. You walk over to the velvet drapes and fling those open to let the light in. When you look back toward Anna and Elsa, Anna is hunched over, watching Elsa intently. Elsa slowly rolls her hands over and over one another. You run over to watch them and watch Elsa intently with Anna. You start to see specks of light forming around her fingertips. A sudden chill of frozen air gusts through the echoing room and gives you goosebumps. She rolls her hands more and more and more of this sparkling light shimmers out from her fingertips. The whole room has now turned into a beautiful wintry wonderland. She separates her two hands and focuses intently on a tiny white puff forming between them. The white puff gets bigger and bigger as more of the sparkles coming from Elsa's hand pours into it. She sets down the small snowball on the icy ground. Then she turns to you and holds out her glimmering magical hands towards you. You place your hands in hers and you can feel a tingling sensation as twinkling light starts to glow around your own hands. She says, go ahead, make a snowball. You roll your hands over and over, one over the other, and the flurry starts to get bigger. When it's twinkling brightly, you hold your hands out wider and focus on the space between them where a small white puff is formed. You motion your shining glowing hands as if you are patting a snowball with more and more snow to make it bigger and bigger. 
That's exactly what's happening. You keep pouring more twinkling light into the snowball, and once it's slightly bigger than Elsa's, you set it down next to hers. As you did that, she was working on the last biggest snowball. You and Elsa stacked the medium-sized snowball on top of the biggest one, then put the smallest one on the very top. Anna pushes through with a carrot nose, two pebble eyes, and stick arms. Elsa waves her magical arms swirling around the snowman, and poof! It's Olaf who has come to life. <laughs> Am I right? He waves his stick arm hello. Hi everyone, I'm Olaf, and I like warm hugs. Elsa made him a personal snowstorm flurry so he doesn't melt on your adventure. You, Elsa, Anna, and Olaf scurry out of the room across the hall to another great ballroom on the opposite side of the castle. Elsa flings a dark green door open and Anna goes to the back of the room to fling the velvety drapes wide open to let the sunshine in. This room is decorated with more pictures in ornate gold frames, trinkets and gizmos line the walls and floors. There's a big royal chair that has a back as tall as the ceiling. There are creaking wooden bookshelves with rows and rows of antique books. You walk over to one and pull it off the shelf. The cover is dark green and broken in with age. You open the cover and thumb through the coarse pages that are tattered along the edges. It's in a language you cannot read, but you trace your fingertip along a single line of text, imagining what it could say. What do you think it says? You clap the book closed and put it back up on the shelf. Continuing to explore the room, you walk toward the window that is soaking the curious room with late morning lights. Standing in the middle of the window, you look through the crystal pane out onto the kingdom. You are not much higher up and can see not only the bustling city busying itself in the marketplace below, you can also see the harbor with ships coming and going. Looking further out, you can see the North Mountain looming high over even the castle. And just below that is a richly green forested valley that is shaded by the North Mountain. Anna walks up slowly behind you and meets you in the middle of the window. She says, Kristoff has a family of love expert trolls that live in the valley just under the North Mountain. It's called the Valley of the Living Rock. Do you want to go? You happily agree to travel there. Anna opens the latch in the middle of the two window panes and the window flies open like a door. A rush of warm springtime air bursts in and fills up the room. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Feel the springtime bloom expand your chest. Then breathe out through your nose. Anna points out the window and says cheerfully, I, I, I better go. I have to go. I, I better go. You look out the window confused but you look closer and see that there's a flat wooden swing suspended by thickly knotted ropes just outside the window. You excitedly jump up on the windowsill with both feet balancing. You reach over and grab the ropes on each side of the swing with both hands. The rope is so sturdily knotted that your hand cannot wrap fully around it. It feels secure, so you grip the rope tightly hop up and pull yourself onto the flat wooden swing. The swing pushes all the way forward with your weight jumping on, then swings all the way back toward the castle. You feel your belly drop from the falling motion of swinging so high. You move your weight back and forth, back and forth, and swing joyously high above Arendelle in the open window of the enormous castle. 
You look back in the room and everyone is smiling and cheering as you swing. You feel so happy here. Anna shows you how to use the rope as a pulley to slowly lower yourself all the way down to the ground. Reaching one hand as high as you can, stretching tall, you pull up another rope and the swing lowers a couple feet. You do this again and again while the rest of your group runs down the winding staircase to meet you in the castle courtyard. You continue pulling down the rope, slowly and carefully, lowering yourself all the way down the length of the castle. You can see floor after floor pass by. All of the windows are open and you look in at the beautiful ornate decorations as you continue your journey downward. You stop for a moment, struck by something you notice. Looking behind you at the stone castle, you notice that this enormous castle is made up of small rectangular stone after small rectangular stone. There must be millions of stones cemented together to make this whole castle. You reach out one of your hands to brush your fingertips along the rough, stony edges of the castle. It's jagged to the touch. You continue moving down and are almost to the ground where you will land on a pillowy soft patch of green grass. You get as close as you can to the grassy ground and move your weight back and forth for one last swing. You push yourself backwards to get momentum, then burst off the swing flying smoothly through the air before you land gently on the grass. That was so much fun. You roll around in the springtime grass bathed in the sunshine before you get up to head to the valley, the Valley of the Living Rock. Elsa, Anna, and Olaf meet you in the castle courtyard and you all walk back through the open castle gates on your way to find Kristoff and Sven. It's Kristoff and Sven! They're coming back this way! They know exactly how to get to the valley. It is now afternoon and the sun is directly overhead, beaming down on the bustling city. There are crowds and crowds of people walking all around the marketplace on the uneven cobblestone pathways that line the city. You can see Kristoff and Sven down on one of the docks selling the ice that have harvested from North Mountain. You all make your way over to them, even Olaf who still has his own personal snow flurry to keep him frozen together in the springtime air. <laughs> Put me in summer and I'll be a happy snowman. You walk up to the docks and can see waves of the ocean rolling in from the horizon and crashing on the sandy shore below the creaking wooden decks. Anna runs over to Kristoff, who is smiling and very excited to see you. She explains that you want to meet the love experts in the Valley of the Living Rock because you have a heart full of love. Kristoff and Sven smile in your direction as you walk over to them. No, Sven, I didn't get your carrots. But I did find us a place to sleep. You hold the carrot out in front of Sven the reindeer, and he takes a big chomp of it, eating the whole thing in one bite. Everyone follows Kristoff and Sven as they board a large ship with flowing sails. You will need to sail around the coast of the North Mountain to get to the valley where the troll love experts live. It's a long journey, so you settle into your spot at the front of the ship so you can have the best view. The trolls only come alive at night and only when an abundance of love is present. You should arrive to the forest just before nightfall and you have your heart full of love ready to give. You feel the ship floating on the ocean waves. You roll with the waves as you all set sail. You can taste the salty ocean air on your tongue. Throughout the sailing journey, you watch the sun sink lower and lower toward the horizon and cast a pinkish-orange glow over the ocean 
and the kingdom. The gentle rocking motion of the ship on the ocean lulls you to a snooze until you are gently awakened by the sounds of Kristoff and Anna securing the ship to the dock with ropes. You tap Elsa and Olaf in his snow flurry because they too were lulled to sleep. <laughs> this is the best day of my life. The sun is almost setting and the trolls are about to come to life. Let's explore the valley. You make your way off the ship, stepping carefully onto the floating dock below. The setting sun is shining into the forested valley and creating a shimmer of pinkish light that looks sweet. As you walk down from the docks, across the sandy shore, onto the mossy dampened earth that forms the floor of the forest, you feel the chilled air of the shaded valley. You are now completely under the cover of the dense treetops. The breeze that rolls in with the ocean waves brings mist with it that seems to hang below the trees and create a crisp coolness in the valley. What do you want, Sven? Kristoff and Sven lead the way through the forest along a barely visible path that seems to end as you continue walking. You must be taking a secret shortcut that no one else knows about. You walk through the thick brush, tall grasses, and tree trunk after tree trunk. Night is beginning to fall and the yellow lightning bugs that live in the forest wake up for their nightly adventures, fluttering through the misty air. You stop for a moment to watch them buzz all around you. It's so cool and damp in the valley forest that some winter icicles still hang off the tree branches. Twinkling light from the stars and the glow of the lightning bugs light the icicles up and they glisten. Some of the icicles are draped around leaves that hang low to the ground. They sway, glistening in the breeze. You can walk through them like beads as they softly sparkle along your path to the love experts. You hear a fluttering, chiming sound as you move through the lively forest. You come to a clearing in the forest where you see small boulders arranged in concentric circles. There's so many rocks and they will all be love experts. If everyone can give all the love they have in their hearts. You put your hand gently over your heart and feel it beating. Beating beating. You know it's full of love. You, Elsa, Anna, and Kristoff all take a deep breath in through your noses. Fill your lungs with the twinkling misty air of the valley of the living rock. Then, when you breathe out the warm air through your mouth, imagine warming the entire valley with all the love in your heart. You all do, and at once all of the rocks roll over to show their happy, smiling faces. You got to meet the trolls. You walk over to one who is waving at you. You give it a big, squeezing hug. Trolls? Shush, I'm trying to listen. You are tired from your adventure through the kingdom of Arendelle, and from your long journey through the castle, over the sea, and into the forest. With the joyful cheer of the love experts filling the air of the quiet valley, you lay down on the soft grass and look up to the twinkling, shimmering stars that are peeking through the treetops. Feeling love and peaceful, you gently close your eyes to rest. Always remember that Mrs. Honeybee believes in you. You are special and you are loved. I can't wait to see you again. <laughs>